Father Paul and Eve, thank you so much for coming on and bringing your glorious Ukrainian eggs with you. This is a great time of year to, to talk about this. You were St. Michael's Ukrainian Catholic Church That's in correct. Terryville. That's correct. So let's start from the very beginning. How does one start to do these eggs? And, and what is the name of these eggs? The eggs are called pesanke, which is from the Ukrainian word pesate, which means to write. So what you're actually doing is you're scribing and writing on one of the eggs. The first thing you do is go to the shop and get white unblemished eggs in all different shapes oh, and sizes. Oh, as if we could all do this. Well, <laughs> you begin at the beginning as I began years ago. And as then, a little boy? As a little boy, I used to watch my mother do them during the Lenten period because we took food to church to bless. And as I watched her doing it growing up, I used to be fascinated by it. And so I used to just do them during Lent, but as time went on, I used to watch other people do them. And then finally, what began just as a Lenten project ended up as a yearly project, and now I do them all the year round for various talks, displays, and uh, workshops. Now, you're of Ukrainian descent. Yes. But I'm not hearing that accent. You mm. were raised where? In England. I was born in England. But my parents uh, emigrated to Ukraine, uh, from Ukraine to England. We're going to talk about the politics a little bit as we, as we talk about how it is that you do these eggs. So as a little boy, you learn how to do this, and it really has become a passion for you. It has. And as I mentioned, I do them all the year round. Certainly when it's snowing and you can't really go anywhere, I lock myself up till 3, 4 in the morning, <laughs> then get up at 6 o'clock ready for the liturgy at 8 o'clock, and then continue on painting eggs. Do you write in your head what you're going to say to your parishioners as you're kind of doing this? this I do. I think of the designs. I think of something that I can uh, relate to everyday living with some design on the egg. I try to, especially during this time. What kind of eggs do we have here? We've got a various selection. We have ostrich eggs. These are the biggest. We have the rear eggs. We have the goose eggs here. We also have duck eggs, chicken eggs, quail eggs, and the tiny finch egg here. Can you pull that little tiny guy out of there just to show folks uh, how, how tiny those are? There are actually two in here if I can get them both out, yes. Now, how does one even see to put a design it's in those tiny it's, eggs? It's very, very difficult. It's, uh, you have to, and they're very brittle, these uh, shells. So actually, before I finish these two, I probably went through maybe a hundred tiny little finch eggs before I finish them, because they're so brittle, and it's a hot stylus that you use. Oh my gosh, so how many hours, let's say, this one, you said there's 40 eggs there on are, this egg? On this, you, Don't it, drop those, No, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put those back in the little container here. The, this ostrich egg has 40 eggs on it, which symbolizes the 40 days of Lent. This actually took almost seven months, really. The most important thing with this was the outlines, trying to make it symmetrical. And, and did you do that just by hand? Because you're by not hand. going by a grid. No, you, you, you can't. In fact, some people have asked me, are those decal, are they transfers, or did a computer do them? I was going to say. No, it's all done by freehand and with the eye. It's, um, you can never measure on the egg, and no two eggs are alike. So whatever design I may do, no two come out the same because of the different shapes and sizes in the egg. Because these are bigger, let's, let's look at this one too. This symbolizes what, Father? And I don't even want to touch this. Oh, you, 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 you're welcome <laughs> to scared. Well, the eggs began with paganism, really, the beginning, when people celebrated the sun. And as with the dawn of Christianity, then the eggs took on a different meaning. They no longer celebrated the Son, they celebrated the Son of God, Jesus Christ. So the, all the symbols took on a different meaning. So for example, the horizontal and vertical lines, or the various ribbons that you might see on the egg, with no beginning and no end, symbolize eternity. The cross with its different forms is obvious. Let's point this this way. So this is, this is the cross. That's the, that's the cross there. And that's obviously for the crucifixion and death of our Lord. Here you can see the fish, which is from the old Greek word ixtos, which means Jesus Christ, Son of God, Savior. Those symbols you could see in the catacombs in Rome with the early church. Again, no grids. No You're grids. just doing this. Everything is freehand. Freehand. Everything is freehand and measured with the eye. How do the designs come to you? I've seen designs from various people. I've seen, I see fabrics or different colors and I sort of come home and think about how I can elaborate on it or do something. But sometimes, most of the time, I make up my own designs. All these are my own designs here. How many hours on this intricate egg? That one probably 
you could reckon maybe another six months. Si so six months you're coming. Now, are you working on little ones at the same time and big ones at the same time? You have time? to walk away from it bit by bit because just to do one side here, you could spend four or five hours and then it's tiring and you have to walk away, rest the eyes and then come back to it and refresh yourself. Are the colors, tell me about the colors that you use in these eggs and the kind of dyes you use. The dyes we use are aniline dyes and the colors vary. As you can see, the yellow color that we have here, you see yellow on the eggs here. They symbolize wheat, and wheat is a symbol of bread, which is the bread of life. So if you think of all of us have bread for the bread of life as a sustenance, then in the Old Testament for the Jewish nation, it was the manna falling in the desert. For the Christians, it's the Christ being the bread of life which is our spiritual sustenance. Green, the shrubs, the trees, whatever we have in green, symbolizes vegetation and the earth. And uh, the blue symbolizes the celeste, the stars, the heavens, and everything that uh, we have in, in the sky. Since you were a little boy, how many eggs have you done? Hundreds, thousands, and where uh, do they all go? Hundreds. They're all over the world. They're in display in London, in Rome, uh, Blessed Pope John Paul II has some of them. I when he did was, you physically give it to Pope I John did. Paul II? I had uh, celebrated Mass with him in his private chapel twice on two occasions. One was during the Easter period, and I personally gave them to him. And then, of course, he signed a book for me and signed a papal blessing, which I have, and now he's going to be canonized. So, of course, yes. it's, it's a, a wonderful memento. Yes, and then um, here in America, they've been on display in Philadelphia, New York and of course in Terryville and Hartford. Is there a big wish that you're going to get these eggs somewhere? I would like to eventually to have them in some museum permanently because I'm not going to be able to keep them all myself as mm -hmm. time goes on. I would like them to have a permanent home somewhere in a museum. And I have given, I'm preparing some for Ukraine. I have a great big museum there in Ukraine. And I'd like to you know, have some here in the States and some in London and some in Rome, which I already have a few places here. How wonderful. All right, so how does one start an egg? The first thing we need, uh, we need some tools. The, the tools we need are a candle. We need beeswax. Beeswax because of its high melting power. And of course a stylus, which is called a kistka. With a Did little you make the stylus or do you No, these this? can be bought, but I have some that my father made, which would be you take old cans and turn them on a needle and put them in a piece of wood. That's how they were done years ago, and that's how I have some at home and I still use them. But these are the ones you can buy now in various shops, these styluses. And the idea is you heat the stylus in the flame, and then there's a funnel in the back here, and you scoop up the beeswax from the funnel here. And... Um, so this is what you use to write, to, yes. to draw your pattern on the yes. egg? Yes. You have to use beeswax because of its high melting power. But the other reason is because if you use any other wax, the dyes seep through beeswax. Is that trial and error, or just through the hundreds of years you know that, that that's it's, what uh, it's It's trial and error, and it is, it is correct. It, people who have tried to use candle wax, they found the dyes seep through. And you just begin to scribe a line. Very quickly, just going to uh, do the uh, little star here. This is amazing that you do this freehand. Yes, and it's, it's all... not you, you don't use a pencil and draw it on. You first. can use a pencil to start... Um, to divide the egg into the different forms, into halves and quarters. It does help, but again, it's all by, by the eye. You cannot measure any of this, as you can see. Just continue on and scribe the lines. As you're making that star, and, and we look at what's going on now in Ukraine, in uh, Crimea, the section that has been taken over by Russia, you have descendants that are in Ukraine. Thoughts about... Um, that section of Ukraine about the, about the country? I feel very sad at what transpired in Ukraine. I have relatives in Donetsk where there's also a bit of an uprising and I visited them some years ago. It's very sad because the Russians and Ukrainians live side by side. There never was an issue. And of course the most important thing today is we're praying for peace, that there's no bloodshed. That both sides can live in harmony and peace as they did. And we just have to pray and hope that some good outcome will come of this. One of the legends with the Easter egg is that there's a big monster chained to a cliff and 
while people are painting Easter eggs, the chains tighten so evil can't prevail in the world. So I encourage everybody to paint lots of eggs, because while people are painting eggs, love overcomes hatred and evil. What a lovely sentiment. So uh, you're, you're doing a star now, and then what is the next step beyond this? That? And, and I marvel at just doing this. I, I can barely draw a straight line. The egg now is ready look, to look paint. Look how the perfect this is. I just, I just want to see if we can get a shot of this. This is, this is all just freehand with the beeswax, and then you're going to choose colors and fill this in. Now, uh, this, is, this is a boiled egg? Th this is a raw egg. A raw egg. A raw egg. Don't let me drop this. No, I've dropped, <laughs> I've dropped many. People, people ask me, do I have scrambled eggs at home? Lots of them. <laughs> in fact, it goes into the yellow dye. Again, this dye is? It's, it's an aniline dye, which is non-edible. There are edible dyes and non-edible dyes. The aniline dyes, the non-edible ones, the colors take better than the edible ones. Where does one get this? Because I know my eggs on Easter are not this vibrant. Oh, you, you, bu you can buy them at various Ukrainian shops and I have lots of oh. supplies as well because I get, give talks and workshops everywhere. So, so out it comes a vibrant, vibrant yellow. And then we pat it dry and um, we go to the next process. And you see the, the wax applied now, everything underneath the wax there remains white. I'm going to have you show it this way. So, all right, so under the wax is white. It's white all right. that we did over the white egg. Uh -huh. And now we're going to cover the egg in yellow. Do something in yellow. And so you keep... So you does that wax disappear then over time or it, 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 it stays. stays? It's it a stays. wax batik process. It stays. Then after we've done this, at the very end, we're going to melt the wax off and then it'll leave the design at the end. And some of these are flat, and then you finish them with a gloss. What, yes, what it's, makes, a var it's a varnish. It's a varnish, and yep. what is the varnish? It's um, a clear varnish. It's just a, a clear varnish that's oil-based. It gives it that shine. But photography, for photography purposes, it's not good to do it with, with um, varnish. Right, it's, it's, it's better it's for flat. Better if it's yeah. flat. That's why these, these are, are some of the pictures. Let's, as, as you're talking, we're going to go through some of the pictures of these eggs that uh, Bill Kachakshik, we're, we're so happy that he took these pictures for us. But these are just amazing eggs. When you give one of these away, is it like giving away a child because of all the hours you've spent <laughs> it, on them? It, it is. You sort of, um, but I enjoy giving them away, you know, who I give them to, whatever. Because when they're blessed, that's when we normally give them. Because we bless these at Easter. Uh -huh. And um, they give, they're not eaten on these eggs. These eggs are just kept for the house that are blessing in the home for everyone. And these are... Some of them are blown out eggs. Yes. The, these were blown after uh, the eggs were painted. Really? Yes. So aren't you afraid you're going to disrupt? Well, what? Because I see the little hole here on the bottom. The, the idea is sometimes you put the varnish on first and then blow the egg because it gives us an added strength. I see. So you, once they're painted, then yes. you will take all the insides out of them because yes. they're much lighter. Yes. Now. And they, they stay together. And now I noticed this one that you have this on a, so this rotates. Yeah, it's on a stand. Yes, it's I on just a stand. Uh, yes, it's just a display stand. And it does rotate. Yes. But it's just absolutely beautiful. What else? I mean, how do you teach somebody to do this if they can't do the freehand? I mean, there's no stencil for this. No, uh, just like I'm doing now, just very freehand. Just something people just draw anything on. Normally, when I'm doing these workshops with children or adults, they just do something, squiggle something like uh -huh, this. Just uh -huh. begin. But I told them that's how I began. But it, it, it began no straight lines. I couldn't do a straight line. I couldn't do anything. But as time goes on, you practice, and uh, practice makes perfect, in, almost. <laughs> in Ukraine, this time of year, over the the Easter season, will you see just an amazing amount of these? I, I would. Think oh, that people yes. would be paid to do this in yeah, the country. Yeah, pe people do them over there. They do. Um, there are some wonderful artists over there that paint various eggs. They do, and in this country as well, there are people who do uh, lovely eggs as well. And uh, they, especially at this time of the year, but I think now it's become because people are aware of the eggs. It's a whole year-round project now for a lot of people that do paint them, mm -hmm. but um, not many do them like I do during the year. Uh, they just do them during when the Lenten spring begins. 
then everyone begins to paint eggs. That's when most of the people ask me to do the workshops, but of course I can't always do them during Lent because of the commitments. Have you ever taken your skills with eggs and put paint on a canvas and done that? I have. With wax batik, I have. I, I did create something, but that was very painstaking. I have. The, and this is not? Uh, it is, but I'm used to doing this, you uh -huh. see, so it's... Uh, so you, you, it doesn't really translate for you on canvas? No, I've done it, but you can do it, but it's, um, you need lots of dye and you need um, the, the right canvas and the right design to go on. I've done it, then you melt the wax off and it leaves an imprint like before. But putting a paintbrush in your hand and painting would not be... No, I've, I've, done, I've done some paintings, but not a lot of them. No, not a lot of them. All right, so you've done, oh, I'm going to put this this That's way. That's ready now for red dye. All right, dye. so you've done this again freehand. Yes. And you've got little um, squigglies or what? Yes, we call them ram's horns. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> squigglies, ram's, ram's and horns. And of course, if you see the, like, the little, um, tri the, the sort of part of the star there, the net, uh -huh. that would be from the, the triangle was always a reminder of fire, water, and of course the, the other elements of the air. But then the triangle now represents the trinity, but it's not really a triangle, it's a diamond, is that? But the net inside is that we all become fishers of people, like fishers of men, it says in scripture, so that we bring people back to God. That's when we paint eggs and goodness prevails in the world. Oh, <laughs> I hope so. So you're gonna put another color on This there goes now. into the red dye now. Okay. And it doesn't take, wow, look how fast it's that very takes. Quick, very quick. But also with the dyes, when you dilute them with hot water, mm -hmm. you add white distilled vinegar, yes. not brown vinegar. White distilled vinegar gives it, uh, gives the eggshell, cleans the eggshell and gives it a more so vibrant So we don't color. want apple cider vinegar. No, we want absolutely white not. Vinegar. <laughs> white okay. vinegar and no malt vinegar, absolutely must be red. See, I will just reach into the pantry and just grab whatever <laughs> I have. Now look at the color, okay, now. You pat it down. It's, it's, it's not um, as vibrant as it should be, but uh -huh. for practical purposes here, it's, uh, it's just what we need. And then you, you see, you already see the design underneath. I want to hold that up so we can get this from the cameras. Okay, so look what happens. The design stays and the color's added. And this process goes on. It goes on for all the colors. You can put eight, nine colors on there, but you work from the light color to the dark color. That's amazing. And uh, it's very painstaking. It takes uh, hours of work. But uh, now we'll shade in what we want in red now. And um, very quickly, we'll just heat up our little tool here, the kiska. Have you tried this on any other thing besides an egg? No, only on canvas. Only on, only canvas. on canvas, yes. Have people asked you to do it on, on other items? Uh, yes, people have said you want to try wood or something. I says it wouldn't work on wood because the canvas you can sort of soak it in. Do you remember what Pope John Paul II said to you? Do you, do you remember your conversations? Yes, he said, where are you from? And I told him, in fact, when I was introduced to him, uh, I'm, a, I'm a former nurse before becoming a priest and RN. And, uh, Is the there anything you haven't done? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and uh, the bishop who introduced me to him said, oh, this is, this is, and I said, it's a blob on there, but that's all right. We'll that's never tell, don't worry. And um, said that, oh, he's our infirmarian, he gives injections, very good injections, but the Pope never asked me to give him any injections. Well, that's, so a, good that's a good thing. So he was well. So that's when I first met him. And um, yes, he was very pleased with the eggs. He said they were lovely. And he put them on his uh, off, office table there, his study. And he had them there for people to see. Because I remember the bishop went to see him and he says, your eggs were on the table. So you had one audience with Pope John Paul II? I met him a few times. And twice I said mass with him privately. Then mm -hmm. I met him at various uh, audiences we had from when we were in the seminary there in Rome. I was there with him in Cuba and for his jubilee. Oh, that was wonderful. So that was amazing. I'm sure it was. That was a wonderful experience. It definitely was. Well, this process goes on and on and on. Now and this, I, th I will be thinking of you in the middle of the night when you're up at <sighs> 2 and 3 o'clock working on, on something that's, that's just amazing. Well, we finished now with the red here, even though we've got a little blob there. Once you have a little blob, like, you can scrape it off with a, with a knife. I want to show that. And, uh, that's one of the, we call a defect. If you, you've got to be very careful with the stylus. It doesn't blob and you're supposed to dip it. And sometimes it happens. You can scratch it off with a knife very gently. You well, don't crack the egg. We've taken you out of your surroundings, so <laughs> forgive us for that blob. That's all right. Just in closing, Father, um, what, is the, what is it that you hope that folks get from your creation, your, your eggs, a, a, as a priest? What, what are you trying to teach? One of the things that I find with this, I find it very meditative, contemplative, 
and thought provoking. And I, and it's also, there's a prayer involved with this because where you begin, you say a prayer, God bless me and help me to create these eggs. People who do them, I say, just remain cool, calm, collective, leave everything in God's hands, deep breathing and just paint. Don't worry about the lines, they'll be crooked, mine were crooked, don't worry about scrambled eggs. Just, and people that have started doing them, they spend hours like me doing them now. We're ready for the last dye. We, we the final are. color, which is a royal blue. And hopefully this will take. And then we're going to take the wax off and we'll see the finished product. Right. I'm just it, trying to picture myself doing this. It's, it's never going to happen. Uh, <laughs> I'm going well, to leave this to the professional. Yeah, I think you have to come to my house. And then and, we'll and, have a workshop and, in the and house. Try, and then yes. you can sit with me and uh, we'll do it there in my little studio there. And they can get a hold of you yes. at, at your church if, if yes. they want to come to one of they your can. seminars. Yes, they can indeed. In fact, I'm going to be doing a workshop of all places, a mission a Lenten mission next weekend in Rochester, New York, with a workshop. They've asked me to do both. The priest asked me to do both well, lucky there. them. So there's the finished product. And when you look at it, it sort of looks a bit of a mess. But you can already see the color underneath. I'm going to put that in here. And That's it. So you don't get it on your hands. That's... So the finished product, which is which is beautiful. These should be in my Easter baskets. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, now, now I'll never be able to dye an egg again without thinking about, oh my gosh, I've got to, I've got to do this or that. Now, now we have to remove this. The, the, now comes, and that takes heat? That has to be done over the candle flame. When you remove the wax, you never do it over the flame like that because you can crack the egg okay. or you get carbon on it. You can't get it off. Okay. You do it at the side of the flame and just very gently, you just move it sideways back and forth oh and it takes every can you do it from this angle and we can we can see that and all the wax comes off and the wax comes off you just wipe it off and then you see the design oh that's amazing skilled hands of course <laughs> it's uh, it, it takes years of practice and uh, it, and all with a simple flame. Oh, the simple flame and a simple stylus. Just simple tools, a few dyes, that's all it is. Today they've got electrical dyes, they've got all sorts of sophisticated You don't want to even know from that, do you? No, it's better to keep everything as it was, very traditional, you know. But I mean, pr there is progress and, uh, you know, we've got to sort of accept the progress that uh, we have. You see the... That's just beautiful. I just almost finished it and just get everything off here. And then what you can do is, before you would varnish this egg, you could um, uh, just rub it with a cloth because of the beeswax. It mm -hmm. gives it a, a natural shine without putting uh, any varnish on the egg. And then, of course, stunning. as you advance with doing eggs, you don't have to do it. it actually, see the blob? It's made a nice little red mark. You there. see? It, you it, planned it, that. It turned out <laughs> <laughs> divine providence. <laughs> <laughs> um, as you advance in doing eggs, you don't have to do them on a candle. You can put them in the oven, but at a very low temperature and allow the, the wax to melt in the oven. Interesting. But you have to be very careful because if the egg is full, it will explode. <laughs> well, I, I need to have you to my house when I do it. Father Paul Luneve, thank you so much. Thank you for having for me. For the egg, for showing us this, and have a wonderful Easter season. And a happy Easter to you, a blessed Easter to you, And we Easter hope the best for Ukraine. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. We're praying for Ukraine. Thank you. Thank you for having me here.